What is going on guys, my name is John and welcome back to yet another video. About 5 months ago I uploaded the last video covering all the trainer stars in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and a lot of you wanted me to cover the other games in Generation 4 to see just how much more difficult they could really be. Today we're going to find out how easily you can get a 5 star trainer card in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. If you're not sure exactly what this video is all about, I've included a playlist that contains all the previous videos I've done on this topic that will help you better understand what we're trying to achieve here. Trainer stars are generally given out for completing either difficult challenges or tasks that are exclusive to the game that you're playing. In my eyes, I see this as a checklist to 100% the game, and it's been a goal of mine to try and complete my trainer cards as much as I can throughout the years. Although we have the same amount of stars as Diamond and Pearl, there are still some really unique tasks that we're going to have to complete to get that elusive final trainer card. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. Now if you've watched the previous videos that I put out last year, you'd know that although there are 5 trainer stars you can have on a card, there are technically 6 tiers, as you're given a trainer card right at the beginning of the game. Right when you're able to interact with the overworld, if you open up the menu, you can see that you have the same red trainer card that we collected in Diamond and Pearl. Granted, the UI is a tad different and a little more clean, but hopefully the next few should be a little better looking. Or at least a different color, right? Moving forward, the first task we have to actually complete is the one that you all have probably done. Defeat the Elite Four and get a record in the Hall of Fame. This is arguably the most straightforward one that you have to do, and it's almost guaranteed that this is the first one that you'll achieve in pretty much any game that you play. Although there are 16 badges in the game, and you can face different Pokemon on the second try through the Elite Four, you only have to beat it on the first time though in order for it to unlock on your trainer card. The Johto side of this game is known for being relatively short, and it should take an average player about 6 to 8 hours to get to Lance. Since you can get almost all the trainer stars in any order that you want, there really isn't any rush to get this one right away, but it will realistically make some of the others a lot easier later down the road. Once we enter the game after the credits roll, if we check our trainer card, we'll see that there's now a star in the top right, and our card is now a blue color. I honestly think this should have been the starting card for the game because of just how generic it looks, but thankfully we can immediately work towards getting another star. The next task we have to take on is arguably the hardest one on the list, completing the national decks. Now once Generation 4 was released, there were a total of 493 different Pokemon available within the global Pokedex, and although that's slowly nearing half of the Pokemon in the franchise at this point, that doesn't mean this isn't a tedious task. Per usual, we have some exemptions from the decks that aren't required because they were either timed events or just way too difficult to obtain at that point in time. These 9 mythical Pokemon aren't required, so instead we're going to have to catch only 484 Pokemon. Just like Diamond and Pearl, an overwhelming majority of the Pokemon are available in these games, and the only Pokemon that are legitimately difficult to obtain are a small batch of Sinnoh Pokemon. Including the Mythicals, there are a total of 42 missing, but thankfully there's an easy fix to that that I'll cover in just a sec. If we take a look at the version exclusives for HeartGold and SoulSilver, you'll notice that this is one of the very few games that have a different amount available for each version exclusive. Due to some new evolutions in Generation 4, Heart Gold has 16 exclusives, while Soul Silver only has 12. This definitely doesn't make a huge difference, and considering that I can just train most of the Pokemon I obtained in the previous video, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. But how difficult would this be if you wanted to do this just from scratch? Because most people would want to do this in the cheapest way that they can, we're going to try to do this with as few games as possible. I'm going to be referencing prices from GameStop, but you could definitely find cheaper copies on eBay but just be sure to avoid the cheap bootleg copies that can be easily mistaken. Although it would be extremely helpful to have both HeartGold and SoulSilver, you can realistically complete the decks with only one of these games. Because these games are regarded as some of the best in the series, these are usually the most expensive piece, as they normally cost around $55 to $60, but you can sometimes find authentic copies around the $40 to $45 range if you search around for a bit. If we take a look at the unobtainable Pokemon, it seems pretty obvious that Platinum is definitely the best option. But because Stunky and the Glamio lines are only available in Diamond and Pearl respectively, you're going to have to get both of them, which will probably run you another $70. This should give you a solid 98% of the decks, but there are still even more specific Pokemon that are required. Some of HeartGold and SoulSilver's version exclusives are GBA insertion Pokemon in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, which means you're going to need to either have Sapphire and Fire Red if you chose Heart Gold, or Ruby and Leaf Green if you chose Soul Silver. I know some people might say, well, why not just get both Heart Gold and Soul Silver? Wouldn't that fix the issue for cheaper? The reason why I chose these is because of one specific set of Pokemon, the Regi Trio. Although these Pokemon are available in Platinum, their chambers are only unlocked through the event Regigigas that was released in 2009. 
Either way, that was only released as an event for Diamond and Pearl, so you need to have either one of those games anyways, but without doing that, you're going to be short 4 Pokemon for the completed decks. These two games will add another $70 to $80 to your total, which means that you're going to spend about $200 on just the games to complete your decks. There could potentially be a cheaper alternative by getting a specific set of the GBA games, but I believe this is probably the best option out there. Once the last Pokemon is collected, if we check our trainer card, you can now see that it has two stars and is turned to a nice light green. I'm not normally a huge fan of the color green, but I think this is one of the most unique colors that we've seen in the series so far. Let's move on to the next one. The next task we have to take on is actually something I covered a couple months back. Within the Pokeathlon Dome, there are a total of 10 different events that you can play, and each of them have a specific record attached to them. The goal for this one is to defeat the high score in each category, but there is a little more to that. Initially, each event has a set record that you can beat, but there's a hidden high score for each event that we're going to have to beat in order to get our third star. If you watched the video I made on beating the Pokeathlon, you'd know this process can be pretty difficult if you have a team full of Feebas. But thankfully, since we have the entire Pokedex available to battle with, we can just use a bunch of legendaries and sweep the competition. Aside from learning how the courses work, this shouldn't take very long, and in most cases you should dominate basically every event if you have the right Pokemon. In total, this should probably take 4 hours max, and once you claimed all the gold records, you can check your trainer card and see that it's now at a purple 3 star tier. Once again, this is a brand new color that we haven't seen before, and I could definitely see myself sticking with this one through the rest of my journey in another playthrough. The next objective is another unique challenge of these games, obtaining a shiny crown. As you roam the region with your Pokemon, you can interact with them and find out things like what their mood is, things they notice, or what your Pokemon would like to do. On occasion, if you talk to them, they'll give you an item that they found called the Shiny Leaf. This is automatically applied to the Pokemon, and the objective is to find 5 of them with one Pokemon. Originally, this seemed to be an extremely rare event that you could just stumble upon if you played a ton, but there's actually a set list of areas that you can find them depending on the Pokemon. For each nature a Pokemon can have, there's a list of different routes that a Shiny Leaf can be collected, which quickly turned the process into probably the easiest trainer star in the entire franchise. These routes have to be done in order, which is probably the main reason why most people thought it was completely random. Although the percentage of getting one decreases over time, all you have to do is stand in the grass on the route and mash the A button until you get one, so it's really not as inconvenient as you think. Overall, this should take you maybe 30 minutes to an hour to do, and all you have to do is visit Lyra or Ethan in New Barktown with your 5 shiny leaves. Once they convert the item to a crown, you can check your trainer card and see that it's been upgraded to the 4 star silver card. Although I do like the color silver, something about this one just doesn't really do anything for me. But thankfully, we can take on the final star. As you probably expect, the final star requires us to go to the battle tower once again, and for the most part, the process is almost exactly the same as Diamond and Pearl. We're going to need to defeat 100 trainers in a row within the singles format, which can be quite a grueling process. But thankfully I've had to do this at least twice by this point, so I have a bunch of tips that can really help you out. If you're actually interested in doing this, I've included a link in the description that contains a list of all the possible trainers that you can face. This includes things like movesets, abilities, and even the items they'll hold, which is probably the most resourceful thing you can have if you want to do this in the least amount of time. As you progress through the streaks, there'll be multiple options for each Pokemon, so you'll have to evaluate each one to figure out what the best play would be. But I highly recommend doing this for any battle tower because it almost eliminates those random, unexpected moves that can sometimes get you. I chose to use the same Garchomp, Swampert, and Infernape I used from the last video because the pool of the trainers was almost the same as it was before, but there are plenty of fantastic Pokemon available like Latios, Salamence, Metagross, Togekiss, and Zapdos. Just like Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, Tower Tycoon Palmer is the technical boss for the game, and you battle him twice, once on the 21st battle, and finally on the 49th. The list of Pokemon that he has is exactly the same, but Game Freak changed the items and movesets, and personally I think it actually made it a lot easier. In the first battle, Milonic no longer has Recover, which is probably the most annoying thing to deal with in the entire battle. Rhyperior gains more stab with Earthquake, but for some reason they gave it Roar, and Dragonite seems to be the only Pokemon that genuinely improved with Dragon Dance and Thunder Wave, but Garchomp outspeeds, so it's not really too big of a deal. As for the second battle, Palmer returns with his busted team of legends, but Cresselia was nerfed because of how well it could basically stall anything it could encounter. Calm Mind is easily the make or break move, and thankfully it was replaced with Signal Beam instead. It does unfortunately gain Ice Beam as well, but aside from that it's roughly the same match. 
The 51 battles that follow this one can still be ridiculous on occasion, but since a lot of this information is still relatively fresh in my mind, it wasn't too difficult to do this again. Just really tedious. Upon defeating the 100th trainer, one of the workers will gift us the gold trophy, and if we check our trainer card, we'll be upgraded to the 5 star tier, and our card will once again be a sleek black color. This is definitely the best color by far, and I'm really happy that I achieved this, even though it looks almost exactly the same as the last one. And with that, we've successfully achieved a 5 star trainer card in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. But how did I do? So let's review. Overall, this challenge wasn't necessarily difficult, but I think that's mostly because I've already done this before, and a lot of the things I had to learn were still relatively fresh in my mind. The only truly difficult aspect of this challenge is defeating the Battle Tower, and admittedly, I failed more streaks this time than last time. Regardless, I think this was a pretty fun challenge, and if you're interested in doing this yourself, I've included some links in the description to help you to get this done in the fastest time possible. Other than that, that's all there is to say about getting a 5 star trainer card in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And that's going to do it for today's video. If you liked the video, leave a like and consider subscribing, as I'll be making more content like this very soon. If you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Follow me on Twitter to keep updated with new videos as they come out. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.